Good morning. Welcome to Old St. Mary's Church as we gather to celebrate the Eucharist on this, the second Sunday of Easter. I'm Carl Bernardo, and Scott and I will lead the music. The music and readings for this Mass can be found on page 1167 in your hymnal or in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you'd like. Just click the Sunday Worship Aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Presiding and preaching is Father Schoberly. Our gathering song is number 619, That Easter Day with Joy Was Bright, number 619. The sun shone out with fairer light When to their longing eyes restored The apostles saw the risen Lord His risen flesh with radiance glowed His wounded hands and feet he showed Cause the solemn witness gave that Christ was risen from the grave. O Jesus, King of gentleness, with constant love our hearts possess that we may give you all our days the tribute of a grateful praise. O Lord of all, with us abide in this our joyful Easter tide. From every weapon death can wield your own redeemed forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our risen Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. Well, it was just over a week ago that we gathered around the font for baptisms and we blessed our new Easter water. Dear friends, this morning this same water will be used to remind us of our baptism. Let us ask God to keep us faithful to the spirit he has given us. God, our Father, your gift of water brings life and freshness to the earth. It washes away our sins and brings us eternal life. We ask you now to accept our thanksgiving for this blessed water and to give us your protection on this day which you have made your own. Renew the living spring of your life within us and protect us in spirit and body, that we may be free from sin and come into your presence to receive your gift of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We 
God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet more than ever, believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. The Word of the Lord. Yeah. 
thanks to the Lord, for God is good, God's mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, God's mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The hand of the Lord has struck with power. God's right hand is exalted. I shall not die but live anew, declaring the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord of love and mercy has brought wonder to our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island of called Patmos because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet, which said, Write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, wearing an ankle-length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen, and what is happening, and what will happen afterwards. The Word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. And Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. When he, then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. If you're around me very much, one thing that I hope becomes clear is that I love Easter. I mean, to know that Easter lasts 50 days for me is very joyful. But I often feel dragged down by people who say to me, Father, give it a rest. Or this week, Tuesday, Kids were coming into school. I was wishing them happy Easter. And someone said to me, Father, Easter was so Sunday. But I'm a pastor. I'm a 20-plus year ordained Paulist, a 65-year Catholic believer, and I think my mandate is to promote Easter. What do you think? You think that's a good thing? Okay. Okay, I'll take that. So earlier this week, two of my favorite Easter readings were partnered. One about Peter, the apostle, healing a lame man. Now that's not unusual. That happens a lot after Easter. But the, this particular version of it, the lame man jumps up and he leaps and dances around. So there, there's this jubilation that happens when he does that as he begins to walk again. And then the other story it was partnered with was the road to Emmaus, where after walking seven miles, the disciples finally realize it's Jesus in the breaking of the bread, and in their great excitement, get this, they rush back the seven miles that they came from to tell the rest of the disciples about it. Now that's jubilation, that's energy, that's excitement. So on that day, 
what I did is I had the fourth graders, the kindergartners, and the rest of the parishioners here. And I held them accountable to the Easter Alleluia's. So when I did this, they had to say Alleluia. Get the point? Okay, well, we'll work on that because I'm not giving up on it. So, okay, no surprise. You were expecting it, right? Okay, and in my newsletter piece this week, I talked about the numbers game that is around Easter. I just mentioned a few moments ago the 50 days that are before us, but today I want to zero in on the eight days, the octave of Easter. So each day of the octave of Easter, I don't know if everyone knows this, is considered a Sunday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all the way till we get to this Sunday and we get that last punch in. And every day of the octave takes place in the gospel on the Easter Sunday. Jesus with Mary Magdalene in Matthew and in John. Jesus in Emmaus. And Luke's version of the gospel we heard from today in John and the disciples fishing, and Jesus cooking breakfast, and Mark's synopsis of all those stories, and we finish with today's appearance, today's appearance. So if you look at the timeline, there is some overlap. How can Jesus be all these different places, or even more suspicious, how can the apostles be in all these different places at the same time? And yet, I think that's the point of Easter to see that Jesus is everywhere, like multiple places at the same time. Now, I want you to hear the story of Jesus' resurrection is not linear, meaning that Jesus is not confined to any place anymore. He is risen from the dead. The second Sunday of Easter is the conclusion of the octave of Easter. It is this Divine Mercy Sunday. It is Jesus showing up again. And he says to his disciples, and he says to us, peace be with you. Now, if you've ever paid attention to that time between when we do the Our Father at Mass to the time we come forward to receive communion, we hear an echo of this as it says, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. The priest says that. And Jesus shows up and gives us peace. And it is exactly in those final moments before we come to communion that he is there reminding us. We had a first communion last night at five. We have a first communion coming at 11. And so I, say, I said to the kid last night, and I'll say to the one this, this morning, Jesus is right there in person saying, peace be with you. So to all of you, peace be with you. Now, I don't know if we are ever really ready for all that much good news. We tend to think that keeping things going for 50 days gets a bit old hat and boring, flowers die off, things change, weather changes, heck, we're barely ready for the latest, we're ready for the latest fad even before the old fads are over in our culture. So the good news today, Jesus shows. He shows up. He gives us peace. He shows his wounds and he offers us more than peace. And then, breathing on his disciples, gives the Holy Spirit and says that sins can be forgiven. And lest he does not think we want to think more in depth about that, he gives us something to go more in depth. He is not afraid of letting us probe the nail prints and the wound in his side. Thomas becomes our mouthpiece. We can really experience this Jesus who keeps showing up. Even if we miss him one time, he is still coming back to share himself with us. When we talk about divine mercy and Jesus giving us his divine mercy, it's about that he's showing up all the time 
and he never goes away. No matter how we struggle or stumble or fall, he's right there offering us his love and mercy. And so with Jesus with us, we say, the truth of divine mercy is that Jesus never stops showing up. We are called to look for him. We are called to recognize that Christ Jesus, now risen, fully reveals himself to us, both completely vulnerable but invincible at the same time. As we celebrate First Communions, we are called to let our communicants know that this is the Jesus we believe in and we share with them. But it is also the Jesus that they share with us. Let our faith ever grow stronger in the risen Christ who is always with us. And when we get to the end of today's gospel and says, there are many other stories written that are not in this book, we have but to look at our own lives. We have but to look at the lives of those yet to come who we are responsible for and know that through it all, this risen Christ is still with us. Amen. Let us stand. And we will use the Apostles' Creed this morning. I, I want to uh, note something in the Creed before we say it, because we say this so often, we don't often reflect on it. There's a line in the Creed that says, that, that says, um, he descended into hell. And if you've never paid attention to that before, when I say that Jesus shows up, in the gospel today and all over the place to think that he will show up in hell and that he will bash hell. There, there's, uh, there are images out there uh, called the harrowing of hell. They are artistic depictions of how Jesus comes and breaks hell open. So as we celebrate Easter and as we do this, this Apostles' Creed, we can think of everything that Christ truly conquers. And so we pray together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Putting our faith in the risen Lord and in a promise of eternal life, we raise our voices in prayer before God. That the Church, made ever new through baptism, will always strive to reveal God's mercy and be led and inspired by the example of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those entrusted with the leadership of nations will work for peace and justice, casting aside violence, oppression, and war. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer that Easter faith of this gathering of believers will strengthen the faith of our sisters and brothers. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly baptized and confirmed, may they be a reminder to us of the promises made at the time of our own baptism. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the young people making their first Holy Communion may always be alert to the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will know the healing power of the risen Christ. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that those who have died in the Ukrainian war and all who have died will rejoice in everlasting life. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold, silence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And even though we draw closer and closer, we hope, to the end of the pandemic, we're still conscious of those who are joining us online for fear for their lives, for other special needs. We remember the intentions that they may be praying for at home. And for all of those prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of everlasting life and love, accept our prayers that we place before you through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. As always, thank you for your Easter and your special contributions to the parish. Those of you joining us online, thank you for your contributions that you've mailed in or that you give using the Give button at the parish website. God bless you all for your generosity. Our presentation of Give Sim is number 783, We Walk by Faith, number 783. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O Lord, accept the, of the offerings of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 the God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon this offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Paul, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer that sign of peace to one another. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word.
Our communion hymn is number 635, Be My Hands and Feet, number 635. Touch and Susan heals the hurting hands that break a loaf of bread. Staffs that walk beside the weary, bearing burdens in the stead. See my hands and feet, said Jesus. No artisan from the Once in need of care, give the homeless warmth and shelter, Christ will find a welcome there. See my hands and feet, said Jesus, the artisan from the Distinction, all earth's people first and least. Know within each act of kindness, hope and wholeness are increased. See my hands and feet, said Jesus. Love artisan from the grave. Once I die. 
Let us pray. O Lord, look with kindness upon your people and grant that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us in prayer and worship today here in person and in person online. Let's continue to care about and pray for each other. Uh, as you know, the parish website, oldstmarys.com, has lots of information, including some details about the rest of these announcements. So members of Girl Scout Brownie Troop at Old St. Mary's are working to earn their philanthropy Girl Scout badge through a donation drive to benefit the Chicago Refugee Coalition. Items requ requested include feminine hygiene products, canned food goods, and dry food goods. Please bring your donations by Sunday, May 8th. So as I said, there's more about that at the website and in the bulletin. If you haven't returned your rice bowl yet, you are welcome to do so. The drop box is in the commons. If you wish to uh, send in your contributions to give at oldstmarys.com, you can make it that way too. You can mail a check, currency, all of that. We invite you to please turn that in because the need, as always, is great. Uh, we continue to live stream all of our masses daily and Sunday. Feel free to take a look at them. If there's one you especially like, check our YouTube channel. That gives you all the information about that. Do we have people with us for the first time today? If you are so, raise your hands and let us welcome you. We also have one of our newly baptized with us today and one of our newest confirmed with us. So John and Greg, if you want to raise your hands, and there they are. And anyone that just raised their hand gets to be first in line for the reception after Mass. <laughs> so we, we have returning with us, uh, we have, uh, what do we call that? We call it hospitality, So it, which uh, has some cake and some uh, lemonade and coffee in that. We hope you'll join us for that afterwards. We would also uh, invite you, if you are interested in helping us with that, let us know that because we're always looking for volunteers. The more volunteers, the more we can do, and, uh, and the more stuff. So. so thank you all for being with us today. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down your heads to receive God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessings. Amen. 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 May he who, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Recessional hymn is number 738. Hallelujah, we sing your praises. Number 738. Hallelujah, we sing your praises. Our hearts are filled with gladness. Hallelujah, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. Alleluia, velosa trona, dita vile cao vela. Alleluia, velosa trona, dita vile cao vela. Now he sends us all out, strong 
in faith, free of doubt, strong in faith, free of doubt, to proclaim the joyful gospel. Now he sends us all out, strong in faith, free of doubt, strong in faith, free of doubt, to proclaim the joyful gospel. Hallelujah, we sing your praises, all our hearts are filled with gladness. Hallelujah, we sing your praises, all our hearts are filled with gladness. Hallelujah, Pelotzarona, Tita Bileka Ophel. 